Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. I am Komal Gavar Shekhawat and I hope you all are doing great. I create videos on how to do econometric analysis and data analysis using various softwares like SPSS, eViews, Stata and R. So if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, please do so and don't forget to hit the like button. So in this video, I'm going to discuss or explain the second generation panel unit root test. This video is a follow-up video to the cross-sectional dependence test. So before watching this video, I would request and suggest you to please watch the video on cross-sectional dependence, right? The link for the same is attached in the description box. Now suppose you are dealing with a panel data set. Let's take an example. Suppose you are dealing with a set of countries or a group of countries, let's say group of European Union countries or ASEAN or some countries. So it might be possible that these countries are either politically, culturally, economically related with each other. So these countries might have high cross-sectional dependence among them. So there is a need to check the cross-sectional dependence by running the cross-sectional dependence test, right? In earlier video on cross-sectional dependence, I have already explained how you can perform the cross-sectional dependence test before proceeding with the regression analysis, right? So in this video, I shall explain you if there is a presence of cross-sectional dependence in your panel data set, then how you can perform the second generation panel unit root test. Now the question is, what is the significance of second generation panel unit root test and why there is a need to perform this test instead of the first generation panel unit root test? See, the second generation panel unit root test aims to overcome the shortcomings of cross-sectional dependence in the first generation panel unit root test. The second generation panel unit root test allows you for the cross-sectional dependence among the series and provides more accurate results compared with the first generation unit root test like IPS test, levin lenchu test, shin Pesarin test. These all are first generation unit root test. Okay. So, the second generation panel unit root test provides more accurate results compared with the first generation unit root test if the series are cross-sectionally dependent, okay? Now, the hypothesis in case of cross-sectional dependence test is, the null hypothesis is that there is no cross-sectional dependence against the alternative that there is cross-sectional dependence. Now, the thumb rule that we follow if the probability value or the level of significance is less than 5% level of significance, then we reject the null hypothesis. Okay, so if the p value for the result is less than 0.05, then we are rejecting the null hypothesis that is, there is no cross sectional dependence. This null hypothesis has been rejected. So we conclude that there is a presence of cross-sectional dependence and if there is a presence of cross-sectional dependence in your panel data set, then you need to perform this second generation panel unit root test. Okay. All right. So the next step is how you can perform the second generation panel unit root test in EDUs. Now to perform the second generation panel unit root test, First, you need to open your eView software and then import your data file. So as you can see, I have already imported my data file in eViews and this is my panel data set wherein there are total 145 observations and the time period is from 1990 to 2018 with the set of five cross sections that is there are five series or five countries that are taken into consideration in this panel data set. So these countries are politically and economically related. And when the cross-sectional dependence test was performed on this panel data set, the set or the results concluded that 
there is a presence of cross sectional dependence among the series since the series are cross sectionally dependent so now the se next step is to perform the second generation panel unit group test okay so for that you need to select the concerned variable you need to perform the same exercise for all the variables or you can perform it simultaneously okay so suppose for this variable carbon dioxide i need to check whether this variable is stationary or not in presence of cross sectional dependence right so double click this variable so you can see over here this is the data set for this particular variable okay now you need to click on view okay so you can see over here this option unit root test and since there is presence of cross sectional dependence or the series are cross sectionally dependent so you need to select cross sectionally dependent okay so this dialog box will pop up in front of you now you can see over here unit root test for cross sectionally dependent panels okay so here in the test column the test types are available so there are various test available to perform the second generation panel unit root test there is test proposed by by and nuck that is also called panic test okay then there is test available by pesar and cross sectionally dependent ips test and there is also cross sectionally dependent augmented panel unit root test okay so this evus provides us only with two options over here so you can use these test to perform the second generation panel unit root test okay panic here stands for panel analysis of non stationarity in idiosyncratic and common test so let's first perform the test by by and look okay so you need to select this test in the time and the deterministics are constant whether you are performing it constant or at constant and trend okay so first you need to perform it constant if the series are not stationary at constant then you can select constant and trend okay the like selection methods are also mentioned over here so you can proceed with either with akai confirmation criteria scots han and quinn modified akai okay so i am proceeding with the default options over here the maximum legs for default are 4 right and i am keeping the rest of the thing as default and once you have selected all the concerned things you need to click on okay all right so you can see over here these are the results for second generation panel unit two test by by and nut panic okay so the first table summarizes the entire process okay like the panel unit two test with cross sectional dependence the series the sample size cross sections balanced observations everything is mentioned in this first table see the panic test is a widely considered panel unit two test with cross sectional dependence it is considered because of its treatment of common factors unlike other test and it also allows for an arbitrary but no number of common factors in evus okay the next table or the second box mentions the details of the factor selection procedure okay the factor selection procedure is explained over here and each of the variant here selected four common factors okay the next table explains the common factors this table explains how many factors influence the test statistics and the associated probability value so you can see over here in this third table four common factors are associated or influence the test statistics with the associated probability value the next table here displays the individual adf test associated with each idiosyncratic elements okay each of this cross section its adf values and t statistics along with the p value is mentioned in this table and lastly this table 
idiosyncratic elements pool this table displays the pooled test value okay so here you can see this probability value if this probability value is less than 5% level of significance then we reject the null hypothesis okay the null hypothesis is that unit root is present or the series is not stationary against the alternative that's stationary for at least one of the series. So here, since the probability value is greater than 5% level of significance, so we do not reject the null hypothesis and we conclude that we are accepting the alternative and the series or the variable is stationary, right? So this is how you interpret the results for second generation panel unit to test for the panic. All right. Now, if you want to check the presence of unit root using the next test, then you need to click on view and then again select unit root test and cross sectionally dependent. Okay. And here in the test type, you can select Passarin CIPS cross sectionally dependent IPS test and you can keep rest of the thing as default and click OK. All right, so these are the results for panel unit two test with cross sectional dependence. So this first table shows the entire summary of the results and the next table here shows CIPS unit two test. So you need to focus on this table. Here you can see the probability value is less than 10% level of significance, okay? So again, in case of CIPS unit root test, the null hypothesis is that unit root is present against the alternative that's stationary for at least one of the series, okay? So this probability value here for CIPS test is less than 5% or here less than 10% level of significance. So we do not reject the null hypothesis. So we reject the null hypothesis and accept the alternative that this variable is stationary. Okay. And there is no unit root present in this variable. Okay. In the third table, you can see the results for CADF unit root test. Both these tests are proposed by Passanen. So the EBUS option for CIPS also provides you with the unit two test of CADF test, cross-sectionally dependent augmented Dickey Fuller test, right? So here you can see the probability value of CADF test at lag one, zero, zero, four, zero. For different legs, the probability value is provided. Now suppose, this would not have been the case and you would have accepted the null hypothesis of presence of unit root or the variable is non-stationary. Then in that case, you need to perform the test again and you need to select unit root test cross-sectionally dependent and here you need to select the test type PESAR and CIPS and in the deterministics. Instead of constant, you can perform the test at constant and trend, okay, with intercept and constant. So you, so you can select constant and trend and you can perform the same exercise and keep the rest of the options at default and then you can click OK. All right. So you can check the result at trend and constant. If the trend option would not have provided you with the rejection of null hypothesis, all right? So this is how you can perform the second generation panel unit root test if there is a presence of cross-sectional dependence in your panel data set, all right? So if there is presence of cross-sectional dependence, you the results of first generation panel unit root test could not suffice or could not provide you with accurate results. So you need to perform the second generation panel unit root test in case cross-sectional dependence is present in your panel data set. Okay, so I hope you liked the video. Please click the subscribe button and don't forget to like this video. Thanks for watching. Have a good day.